Erosion is occurring along our section of Lake Huron. It's a natural process. We need erosion to create the beaches that we all love. From 2000 to 2013, the water level was low. And a lot of folks with cottages and homes along the shore thought that erosion had stopped. It was still happening though. It was just happening underwater where you couldn't see it. So now water levels can reach greater distances inland because waves have more energy from that deeper eroded lake bed. But it isn't just water levels that influence bluff erosion. There's also groundwater seepage, overland flow, erosion at the base of the bluff, and gully erosion that all matter. Some areas along the bluff have a history of certain types of failures. One type is called rotational failure. This happens when the bottom of the bluff has been eroded, so there's no plug holding the top of the bluff in place. The unstable area then slumps into a curve. This type of failure can run hundreds of meters along the shoreline and dozens of meters inland. This is what a big rotational failure looked like in 1987 after high water levels in 1986 eroded the base of the bluff. Other areas along the bluff are more prone to landslide failures. This happens when the top of the bluff slides because of thawing in the spring or a saturated groundwater seepage zone. Because there are so many different factors that have an influence on a failure, it's hard to tell the exact timing of one, but once erosion happens at the bottom of the bluff, a failure is much more likely. They can happen at any time and they're more likely to happen during the spring because of a saturated groundwater table, or in the fall and winter, thanks to strong storm systems and northwest winds. Erosion is a normal part of life at our shoreline, and it's our job to help keep your family and property safe while you enjoy Lake Huron. <laughs>